Welcome everyone to the Barhead and District Forum interviews for the 2021 municipal elections. The Barhead Chamber of Commerce, Barhead Leader, and Barhead Public Library thanks you for your time today. Here with us is Town of Barhead's incumbent mayor, Dave McKenzie, seeking re-election. Before we get started, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little about why you're seeking re-election? I'm Dave McKenzie. I'm currently your mayor uh, for the Town of Barhead. Um, as far as an introduction, um, I arrived in Barhead in 1992 uh, as part of a transfer with the RCMP. I arrived here and took on the role as a senior constable. Um, it didn't take too long uh, of policing this community to realize what a great community uh, Barhead actually is. Um, I found that uh, uh, the community was very, uh, very warm, very welcoming. Uh, to myself and my family uh, when we arrived here. Um, I spent uh, the remainder of my career, which uh, expanded 26 years, um, and, and actually took out my retirement while I was in Barhead. Uh, at that time, uh, when, when a member of the RCMP retires, the RCMP will pay for your move to go anywhere in Canada that you want to go. After having some chats with my family and, and our, our opinion of Barhead, we decided to stay here. Uh, the community had that kind of an appeal to me. So we stayed here, uh, very happy to have done that. Um, the fall, I retired during the summertime, and that fall there was a municipal election and it was suggested to me that I, I run for a council position, which I did and was successful. Uh, so it gave me that introduction into uh, the workings of municipal government. It gave me an opportunity, too, to use my experience as an RCMP officer in the town of Barhead and in the county of Barhead. Uh, it gave me a really good view of, of how the community is who makes up the community. I got to see the community daytime, nighttime, weekends, pretty much 24-7. So it gave me kind of a unique outlook uh, into the community and all the different aspects of the community, including the people that live here. So that experience um, gave me a lot of assistance when it came time to help setting policy and, and priorities as a member of, of the council. It was during that time on council that I, I also took on employment, first of all with the University of Alberta as a traffic safety coordinator, and then about two years later the provincial government took over the program and I became a traffic safety consultant for Alberta Transportation, the Office of Traffic Safety. That role had me move uh, throughout communities, every community from Westlock to Grand Cache, um, so it gave me an opportunity to move into those communities and work with them on their traffic safety issues. So uh, it, it gave me again some experience to see how different communities did different things. I got to work very closely with a lot of the agencies, organizations, municipal government, police uh, enforcement agencies through all those communities. Uh, and I did that for about nine years um, and then kind of retired from that program. It was about that time when another municipal election arrived and I decided to run for mayor uh, and was successful doing that in the last four years has been in that role. Uh, I've been very, very pleased to represent the community in that role, um, even through all the difficulties with COVID and the uh, ever-changing kind of political field uh, downloading of responsibilities to municipalities. Um, all these things has been very challenging. Um, but I find that the uh, the experience that I had gained through my other employments through the years uh, definitely gave me a, an opportunity to use those tools and skills um, as part of the decision-making process uh, to get us to this point in time. While not at the same rate of a large urban center, Barhead is experiencing growing incidences of street drugs, crimes, homelessness, racism, sexual abuse, and LGBTQ plus bashing. Most recently has been pushback to vaccines and masking. If elected to lead the town of Barhead Council, what would you do to increase overall well-being in our community? You know, the, the question is very accurate. Um, and in fact, I would say that our rate um, 
of these types of uh, situations is probably very similar to the city. It's just their numbers are bigger, ours aren't as big. Uh, but probably percentage-wise, we're probably right on uh, right on par. We're no higher, no lower than pretty much anywhere else in Alberta uh, or across Canada, for that matter. Um, I think what happens in smaller communities a lot of times these issues are just a little bit more visible and take on the appearance that it is it is higher than than the normal uh, rate. Uh, which isn't really, it's a, that's a perception, not really a reality. And it's just simply because uh, uh, these types of situations just stand out more in a smaller community. Uh, they don't get uh, into a certain area of the community or, or a big city. It's not an inner city thing um, where sometimes these things are out of view of, of some of the other areas of the city. Uh, here, if it, if it happens on Main Street, pretty much everybody in town knows about it or in the community at large. Uh, so we do have those situations. Uh, we've always tried to address it through collaboration. We have um, a good selection of organizations and agencies in the community, and I've and I'm I've always been a big believer in collaboration and 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 getting into a room and having a seat around the table with all those people that actually can take a piece of the issue and contribute something to alleviating the problem. Uh, subsequently, I've been a member of the Barhead Cares Coalition since its creation years and years and years ago. Uh, and a lot of times we'll take these these issues on and try and, and um, coordinate our efforts amongst all those agencies that have a piece of this. A lot of times organizations can take it so far and then their mandate doesn't allow them to carry on, but then another organization will have a mandate to take it from that point forward. So again, it's it's the collaboration and coordination of the efforts to try and, and address a lot of this stuff. Uh, we do have and have created a, a number of programs and awareness campaigns as well as uh, educational programs to sort of explain these situations. We have a number of agencies in town that will work directly with some of the people that are involved in this in the case of homelessness or drug addictions, um, those sort of things, so that we, we do kind of have a handle on how things, um, the reality of the situation in the community. And we work with the law enforcement to deal with the criminal aspect of things. We deal with um, addiction services and, and mental health to sort of deal with the pre-events. Um, you know, hopefully we can we can direct people and, and give enough education to people so they can make decisions that are better for them and, and, uh, and increase the quality of their lifestyles. So we continue to have those meetings and I find that that collaboration is really important and I think it's really important for our municipal government to be very aware and be very active in that. Um, and I've taken that role on very seriously. I, I, I see the impact and that comes back from my law enforcement career. Um, a lot of these people really haven't chosen to be in those situations, but for whatever reason end up in those situations. And like most of us going through life, sometimes we just need a little bit of a hand or a little bit of an education in, into what we could do to change. Um, you, don't, you don't get everybody, but um, get a few of them off of that path. Uh, it, it's just better for the community uh, at large. So again, I, I really, uh, I really find that the coordination amongst all the agencies and the municipal government, uh, and we include our, our our really good relationship with our our county counterparts as well. Uh, they sometimes don't um, deal directly with some of the uh, the social issues, but we coordinate with them to make sure that they are aware of it and. Uh, and the uh, the reaction and the and the support uh, has been very good. We all understand we're all in one community for the most part, and uh, we need to make a coordinated effort to make sure that we do the very best we can uh, for the betterment of our community. What aspect of Barhead do you feel most compelled to change or improve? You know, when I first arrived in Barhead, I kind of noted a, a little bit of a cynicism towards the community and having been uh, in a lot of other communities and worked in a lot of other communities 
I think sometimes if there's anything, we need to really appreciate what we have here. I think I think the quality, the lifestyle, the quality of life that we have in Barhead, um, I'd be I'd be fair to say second to none. Um, you know, and I think sometimes we take it for granted, and there's always a lot of negativity anyway. You know, we don't have this, we don't have that, but what we do have is amazing. And of recent years, I've had the opportunity to, to speak to new residents that have moved here from other communities and, and larger centers. And they can't say enough good things about uh, the town of Barhead and the people that live here. Uh, and the openness and the warmth, and they've moved here to enjoy that kind of a lifestyle. Uh, I think Barhead is is definitely the definition of a uh, of a hometown. Um, hard to walk down Main Street uh, without waving or smiling or having a good morning. Uh, and even when the town was going through our rebranding exercise and we had a couple of consultants that came in from BC and they spent some time in around the downtown area and eating at the restaurants and whatnot just to get a feel for the community and that's one thing that they brought out very strongly was the friendliness of the community um, one anecdotal tale that they told us was they were they were uh, sitting at one of the restaurants in town here and got into a cross the aisle conversation with uh, a couple of um, older residents and uh, and had a real good chat with them and when they went to go pay their bill uh, the older gentleman had paid for their breakfast and they said they don't get that anywhere else you know so it's kind of a testament to the kind of the kind of community and the kind of community members that we have here and I think we sometimes overlook that uh, because it's so commonplace we we sometimes don't appreciate uh, the things we have and uh, and I, if there's anything I'd like to see the community embrace itself celebrate our successes uh, really enjoy what this community has to offer because uh, it doesn't happen in a lot of other communities so we're we're uh, second to none I think in that category how do you plan to attract businesses to fill vacancies in town? Our vacancy rate as far as empty uh, buildings is really low right now. Um, our main street's pretty much filled up. Uh, we're getting some traction on some of the properties that the town uh, owns that we've acquired as just basically fields. Um, and we're getting interest um, for businesses that want to open up and, and have highway accessibility uh, so we're doing well in that regard we uh, we actually took on the services of a, a much larger uh, real estate or, or realty company I guess uh, they develop properties they manage properties they find businesses and industries that are looking for places to build or relocate to uh, so these this company travels in a in kind of an international world uh, and they they are aware of businesses that are looking to relocate and then we'll obviously uh, pitch to them what we have to offer here in Barhead or in the county of Barhead as well uh, the county of Barhead has also taken on this same company uh, to help them with the um, the movement of property out in their Keel Industrial Park so it's been a really good uh, matchup and uh, and again it uh, it puts the focus on a, on a much higher level um, to find businesses that would be interested in relocating here and the properties that we have available for them to come in and develop uh, not just take over existing facilities although that's taken place our champion feeds lot uh, that sat vacant for quite some time has been purchased and uh, and it's going to become a uh, uh, basically a, a publishing uh, distribution point um, for a, a book publisher uh, who's taken it on and we had a number of meetings with uh, the owner of that company uh, to make sure that they knew that they were going to be very welcome here uh, so once they knew that this was available and in a couple of meetings uh, with myself and, and the town manager uh, we definitely extended uh, what we were able to do to help them get set up and, and get moving in here so uh, so there is movement like that and, and in fact we have some others uh, I'm not really at liberty to talk about right now because of 
the way it works. But uh, yeah, I think the community is going to be very pleased with some of the uh, some of the developments that are going to take place over the next, uh, well, even next year or so. Um, so we're we're moving in the right direction. We went through an exercise of a rebranding for the community. Um, it was getting somewhat aged and uh, non-relevant to today's market. So uh, we went through those steps and had lots of community engagement with that. Uh, and I think we've, uh, we've landed on a very good way to market the community on a much bigger scale. Um, you know, we're playing, we're playing with the uh, national and international segments now. And, uh, and you know what? They're taking us seriously because we have gone through these processes. Uh, we look like we're here to do business, and, uh, and we are. Is there one point you would like to make that hasn't already been discussed? I think through conversations, and again with COVID and the way we've had to conduct this, this election, uh, it's been a little bit more difficult, I found from my perspective. Um, and, and one of the things that used to come about was part of my campaign strategy was to go to door to door and, and talk to people. And I didn't have that opportunity this time because of COVID and some of the restrictions. And I honor people's uh, thoughts on that. So I, I didn't go door to door. Um, but the one thing I did miss out on it was hearing the conversations and the, and, and the concerns that the citizens have. Um, so, but I've always had, I've, I've always tried to make it very aware that if anybody had anything they wanted to talk to me about, I was more than available and approachable to talk about anything. And I've had to have a number of citizens that have taken advantage of that. Um, and the one thing, the one thing I think it's really important with municipal government is to make sure that that conversation um, is always open and transparent between the citizens of the community and and the governing bodies. Um, there's a lot of things, I used to get a lot of calls or people that would pop in and ask these questions and they, you know a, a lot of times it was generated at the coffee shop conversations and I heard this and I heard that and they would come and they would say so what is the deal here and and I would explain what was going on and a lot of times it was just a misconception of what was taking place and after a conversation and finding out exactly what what was going on um, they had a better clear understanding of what was going on so we, we really weren't dealing with a lot of the rumors that usually go around in the community people were actually coming in to find out exactly what was happening and I really appreciated that and, and I would extend that comment to the people that inquired that I appreciate the fact when you come in and try and clarify any rumor that you might hear that we would have uh, input on right um, and I think as a if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, it's simply that, is to make sure that the population, the, the citizens of our community, know that they can contact myself or any member of council at any time and ask those questions and clarify any of the issues or rumors that we might hear. Uh, we know how that can get out of control, and it can really cause lots of problems in a community if people aren't getting accurate information uh, from a reliable source. Uh, we battle with social media all the time uh, where I'll, uh, people will just uh, take it in a whole different direction with no substance, no validation of what they're saying and a lot of times people will buy into that stuff when they could simply make a call to the town office or to myself or any of the other counselors and actually find out this is what's going on. Um, so I think if there's anything to be addressed it's that. Um, We've, or I've, I've tried to improve our, our communications with all the aspects of the community, uh, which includes the Chamber of Commerce, our Main Street merchants, um, you know, our, our, our uh, downtown businesses and our industrial park businesses are very crucial to this community. And I want to make sure that, that we have a good dialogue between those businesses and the and the town office um, and it's amazing how once we, we build up that rapport um, how much smoother things happen how much uh, the businesses want to be part of, of uh, improving our community uh, you know the merchants can do some things 
um, the government of the of the town can do some things, and together we can uh, we can really make this community pop. And I think if there's anything that needs to be addressed, it's the continuation of that relationship. Thank you again for participating in this format. Before letting you go, do you have any closing remarks? Yeah, those of you that are viewing this, um, I appreciate the time you're taking and the interest you're taking in our municipal election. Um, I've served four years as your mayor, and I would like to continue in that role. And with your support, together we can make Barhead the gold standard of communities. Thank you for your time.